Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's me again Chelsea and today I am bringing you my September TBR. Now for this TBR, not only am I talking about one readathon, I'm actually talking about two readathons. Originally I was going to split this video into two parts and like release it on separate days, but I thought why not just squish them both together and see what we get from that. So the readathons I will be taking part in are not only Becca's Bookopolathon but also the Magical Readathon hosted by G over on Book Roast and not only is September known for amazing readathons but it is also my birthday month so it is a fantastic month all round so I'm hoping to get some decent reading done even though my reading has been a little bit of a roller coaster as of recent but that's okay. So my plan for this video is we're going to talk about Bookopolathon first. I'm going to talk you through the books that I've picked and then we're going to move on to the Magical Readathon and for the prompts where I have crossed over books because I've tried to do that so I can get as much crossover done as possible. I will just show you the books that I will be using to fulfill that prompt and then if there are any, which there are two, if there are any books that I have not yet talked about during the Bookopolathon I will then obviously try and explain what I vaguely think these books are about when I get to them in the Magical Readathon. So, the plan for Bookopolathon is five rolls, that's what I wanna do, and hopefully <sighs> the dice are nice to me. I have set my dice up on an app because I don't actually own two of them to use, and Becca has clearly stated that you need to use two, just to make sure that if you get doubles, you can add more rolls because what is there without a little risk? So that is what we're gonna do. Now, let's get into my first roll. So my first roll typically was a double, double three. So that means we're doing six rolls so far but it landed us on a human main character. And for this book prompt, I have picked Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bowley. And from my limited knowledge about this book, all I know is that it's kind of like a thriller mystery or is definitely more mystery than thriller. So we are following 18 year old Darnis, and I hope I'm saying that right, please let me know if I'm not down below, who feels a little bit like an outsider with her mixed heritage. And one day she witnesses a shocking murder and reluctantly agrees to go along with a covert FBI investigation which looks into deaths that are drug related and with the deaths and the destruction kind of piling up on her pretty soon it strikes a little bit too close to home. Donis needs to figure out how far she'll go for her community even if it may well tear apart everything she has ever known and this sounds really really good. I'm really excited to be getting into it and to be actually experiencing this book. I got it a while ago. I got it when I went to Birmingham a couple of months ago with my friend. It's been sat on my shelf like many any of these lovely books just sat on my shelf waiting for me to actually pick it up and read it and I think September is going to be that month. Now on to roll two. So roll two got us a five and that moved us to the hyped book square and for that I have picked Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. Now not only has Becca hyped this up and she is part of the Elder Ling Along which is a massive group of people who are constantly reading this whole series and sharing their thoughts and feelings on live streams. I've also seen many others talk about these books including bookstagrammers and booktubers who love this series and find that it is a staple in their fantasy collection and with me being a predominantly big fantasy reader I thought now would be the perfect time to actually check this out. Now I don't really know a lot about about this. Um, I believe we're following our main character Fitz. So his father is the crown prince and when the, his father finds out that Fitz is coming to stay at the castle he abdicates the throne and moves away so there is no one really to look after this young lad. So he ends up being looked after by the stable master and it isn't until he's a little bit older that the king finds an actual use for him and decides to train him as an assassin seeing as he has no real ties to the crown and I think it sounds really really cool. I think that this is going to be a good book 
Do I reckon it's going to be five stars? No. And I'm going to say that purely for the fact that this is the first book in a very long series. I know that not all the series are tied into Fitz, but I know we come back to him for another one of the trilogies later on. So I think this is going to be a lot of world building and a lot of getting to know characters. I think I'm going to really enjoy it and I'm looking forward to creating those bonds with these characters that are going to rip my heart to shreds later on when I get to further on into the series, as I've seen many people say they cry at different points of these books. So, bring on the waterworks. So let's get on into roll number three. So roll number three gave us a seven and landed us on the myth lore, legend, fairy tale, retelling, square, and for that I'm going to put something on this TBR that I put on my August TBR but I haven't actually managed to get to this month, and that is Cinder by Marissa Mayer. So this is a Cinderella retelling except Cinder is actually a cyborg and we are following her as she is obviously navigating the world as a cyborg where this the country that she's in doesn't necessarily, you know, approve of cyborgs, treats them as lesser than they are, and it's not very good. It's not very nice, obviously, but I'm looking forward to giving this a reread. I have already read it before, but I am convinced I need to finish the Lunar Chronicles series. I have read this book and the second book, which is Scarlet, and I have not read the final two books, so that is my aim. Whether I'll finish it this year, Probably not, but if I can get a good way into this series now, then I think it will do me some good for later on. So looking forward to actually giving this a reread. Roll number four. got us opulent cover and for that I am picking the Empire of the Vampire which I will put here. The photo doesn't necessarily look opulent but it's definitely got foiling, it's definitely got hidden foil artwork under the dust jacket and I will be reading my Waterstones edition as I've pre-ordered that and hopefully it comes in time for me to actually read it in the month of September. I believe it comes out the start of September. Hopefully that will give me enough time to actually manage to read the book. It is a chunker, it's definitely the biggest book on this list, but maybe if it doesn't come for the first week I can try and knuckle down and get at least one or two of the smaller books out of the way, ready to dive into that book and have my heart ripped out, because I believe that's what's going to happen. Although I'm not looking forward to reading it, because we're going to have to wait a while for the sequel to come out, and I'm not very good at waiting. <laughs> So we shall see what is going on, but if you didn't know, Emperor of the Vampire is obviously a vampire book. Um, I don't really know an awful lot about it because I don't want to know an awful lot about it. Um, I haven't looked up the blurb, I haven't really looked up the ins and outs of it, I have just kind of watched Jay Kristoff's like question and answers about the book which don't really give away any of the plot points and that's how it's going to stay so no description for this but it will be linked down below in the description as on all these books so you can check out what they actually are about without my rubbish descriptions and you can check out what this is about without me spoiling myself because I don't want to know I just want to go in and see what it's like that's my aim on to roll number five which should have been our last roll but is now not So for roll five, we got a four, which moved us to the square of last colour. So I have to pick a book that has the same colours as the last book that I added to my TBR. And for that, I have chosen In the Ravenous Dark by A.M. Strickland. So there's red and there's black on this, like there is on Empire of the Vampire. Once again, I have no idea <laughs> what this is about at all. It's about magic, I guess. Power never dies and neither does desire. I'm pretty sure, if I remember vaguely, this is the book that... Um, was this, this was an Illumicrate book. They said it's got polyamorous rep 
pin it or is it a love triangle i can't remember something like that but i don't want to read too much into the blurb because i don't want to spoil myself for anything there's magic in this book there's lgbtq plus representation so i think it takes a lot of boxes and it is the same colors as the book that i just picked so there we go there is that lovely prompt completed well not completed because i haven't read it yet but sorted and finally on to roll number six hopefully <laughs> six i rolled a seven and that landed me on the lgbtq plus rep square and for that i have picked she who became the sun now i looked on goodreads and i hope this has got rep in it i'm actually not 100 percent sure but goodreads said it did so if i'm wrong let me know in the comments but i'm really hoping it is and i'm looking forward to this this is actually another one of my anticipated reads for the year not that i mentioned it at all in my anticipated reads for the year but i promise it is so in this book we're following a young girl who when she was little she went to a seer and the seer told her that she was a girl that would amount to nothing and her brother was someone who would amount to greatness this is set in 1345 china when there was a strict mongol rule so it is not uncommon for girls to have an early death however they were building up their son but when when a bandit attack leaves these two children orphans it is actually her brother who dies so the young girl takes on her brother's identity and goes and joins a monastery and we follow her as she pretty much has to then leave the monastery to go on to fight in a war i think i think that's roughly what happens again description is down below my descriptions are awful but this has been said to be kind of a Mulan-esque retelling and I am here for it and I'm really looking forward to reading this. So fingers crossed there is some LGBTQ plus rep. If there isn't, then I'll just have to find another book that will fulfil that prompt and say that Goodreads lied to me. But yes, that is roll number six. So those will be all six books that I plan to read for the Bookopathon. Like I said, I was hoping for five books, but I got six instead. And I'm quite lucky that I've managed to actually cross over a lot of the books that I have rolled for Bookopathon into the Magical Readathon. So I have not planned really any of my prompts that are meant to take part from the end of September until April. There are three of those which kind of relate to the character that you build. And I have I've got my little sheet here so obviously my name is Chelsea I didn't think of a cool name I just thought of that and then the only bits that I have filled out is my certification which is novice because this is the first time that I'm doing this as with probably everyone because this is the first time that this is happening my background is that I am a wilding so I am from a wild part of my country and I am from the province Kerador which I thought was pretty cool it sounded right up my street really although i am a bit of a homebody i really appreciate that Kerador is pitched as a kind of like nightlife party town kind of thing where there's multiple inns everywhere and a playhouse me myself i work within the event industry so i am always around for a gig uh party a theatre performance love them so I thought that was definitely the place for me to live and my heritage is that I am a dwarf because when I was reading through the character sheet it ticked a lot of boxes for me I do feel as though I fulfill a lot of those things I am quite logical I am quite sassy there's a lot to it that I was just like yeah that sounds like me so you know that is me as a character i haven't really decided what my lunar phase at birth is I don't really know what to put for that I'm not too sure but there is my character i'm very excited to get going with it so obviously i've got my prompts for later on in the year which just include like three separate prompts excuse my writing it's awful um so because i'm a wilding i need to read a book largely set in the forest because i'm from Kerador, i need to read a book from an ongoing series and because i'm a dwarf i need to read a science fiction so i will plan those out for the rest of the year and then just whack them in there so i can complete that before we get to april 22 which is when the readathon will start again but let's get into the actual prompts that are set for september now g made it very clear that you only have to actually complete two of these prompts so i have filled out all seven of them with books that i've got here 
and if I don't read them all, I don't read them all. As long as I read two, that is the main thing, but obviously I've written them all down just so that I know what they're gonna be. Now these prompts all link with a map that G put together. I will link her announcement video and I will also do the book uplathon video down below in the description box so you can check them out for yourselves. But G has come up with a map which is kind of like where we're meant to be following so that we arrive at the Magical Academy which is where the end goal is for this month and where we will start the readathon in April. So the first place is the Novice Path Entrance. Read a book with a map and I'm crossing this prompt over so I can read Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb because this does in fact have a map. Happy days. Prompt number one. Ticked love that for me. So the next place is the Ash Torn Tree. Read a book that has been tempting you and that is She Who Became the Sun for me. I constantly keep looking at this book since I received it going I need to read that, I want to read that, I want to read that. A lot of the things that I said about this book tick a lot of boxes for me so I'm looking forward to getting to this and this has definitely been tempting me and I've definitely been wanting to push it right to the top of my TBR and I finally can for this month. The next place is The Mist of Solitude and that is to read a standalone and I believe this is a standalone let me know in the comments if I'm wrong and I'll swap it out but I currently have in the ravenous dark for this prompt because I looked on goodreads and I it says one but it, it doesn't say that there's gonna be a sequel so I don't think it is but if it's not then I know I'm getting a standalone in my Illumicrate this month at the end of August so maybe I might swap that out but currently it is in the ravenous dark and if I'm wrong <laughs> then I will read something else. <laughs> so the fourth stop is The Ruin of Sky and that is read a book that features ghosts slash haunted houses or other supernatural elements. Now I don't think I have any ghost or haunted house books on my physical TBR anywhere so I have gone with The Near Witch because I believe witches are supernatural. Kind of, you know, melding this prompt to, to fit me really um, but that is my plan. I am really looking forward to reading this. I have loved every V.E. Schwab book that I've read so far. So hopefully, I will love this too. That is my plan. I don't really know anything about this, so I'm just going to read the back. So it just says, The Near Witch is only an old story told to frighten children. If the wind calls at night, you must not listen. The wind is lonely and always looking for company. There are no strangers in the town of Near. These are the truths that Lexi has heard all her life, but when an actual stranger, a boy who seems to fade like smoke, appears outside her home on the moor at night, she knows that at least one of these sayings is no longer true. The next night, the children of Nier start disappearing from their beds, and the mysterious boy falls under suspicion. As the hunt for the children intensifies, so does Lexi's need to know about the witch that just might be more than a bedtime story, and about the history of this nameless boy. So, it sounds supernaturally e to me, so... That is my pick for that one. The next location is Obsidian Falls and that is read either a thriller or a mystery book. And again, I have used Firekeeper's Daughter. I believe this is a mystery slash thr thrillery e kind of thing. So that is what I'm using for that prompt. And I'm hoping... <laughs> I really enjoy it. The sixth stop is Tower of Rumination and that is read a five star prediction and for me this is going to be the Emperor of the Vampire. Although I've said Assassin's Apprentice probably isn't going to be a five star because it is the first in a very large fantasy where there will be a lot of world building, I feel as though Emperor of the Vampire might just hit that five star mark because it is massive and there are already hints being thrown out about how it's heartbreaking and there's a lot of development within the first book already so that's my five star prediction. And finally, location number seven is Aurelium Academy Arc. So you need to read a book with a school setting. And for that, I've picked Master of Sorrows. Originally, I was thinking about adding this into my book Oplathon TBR for hyped book, but it's a bit of a chunker. And with Empire of the Vampire and everything, and Firekeeper's Daughter isn't too small, I was thinking pick as many small books as possible. However, I wanted to add this in somewhere, so this is where this one goes. This one is following our main character, which I can't remember his name because I don't really know a lot about this book because I haven't read it yet. But this book essentially is following the thought process of what if magic was actually bad. So there is an academy in this book that people go to and they are trained in how to like extract magical objects and they are then taken to a certain place to be looked after or destroyed or something like that so that no one can ever use that magic and I think our main character kind of gets tempted to not be like that. Don't know, awful description, really looking forward to this, 
hoping I enjoy this one as well. So there you go, that is my whole TBR for the month of September. I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's actually going to be a really good month of books. I've got some awesome things on this list and I'm really looking forward to them. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, really supports me and my channel. Let me know down below in the comments, are you taking part in any readathons? Are you taking part in these two readathons? What do you plan on reading? If you want to just leave me an emoji to let me know that you are here, just leave me the stack of books emoji because it's a tbr it's a stack of books and if you want to see more of me and see how i get on with reading these books and my thoughts and feelings about these ones and the books that i've read this month already being august or maybe you know see some of my weekly reading vlogs that are going to come in september please consider subscribing down below and ringing that notification bell so you get notified every single time i upload new videos i currently upload on a wednesday and a sunday so be sure to stick around for more bookish content from me but otherwise that is everything for today's video i hope you're having an amazing day and i will see you soon in the next video bye